In December 2004, a 20-year-old Britney Spears walked into the KISS FM offices in Burbank, carrying an unmarked CD to meet radio host Jess Lozano. The meeting was pre-planned, but only barely. Spears had called about an hour before to ask whether she could play her new song live, a phone call that Lozano had immediately thought was a prank. Usually you don't believe that, he would later state in other words. Usually this kind of meeting would have to be cleared by layer upon layer of managers, PR agents, and radio executives before it could ever come to fruition. But on that particular day, Britney had gone rogue. Following the worldwide success of her 2003 album In The Zone, Britney had gone on to release Greatest Hits My Prerogative the month before, and was still promoting the titular Bobby Brown cover as the album's first single when she showed up at KISS. But that wasn't all that had happened in her life recently. In 2004 alone, Britney had joined a new religion on recommendation of her friend Madonna, eloped to Vegas with her childhood friend Jason Alexander only to know the marriage 55 hours later, canceled the Onyx Hotel tour after breaking her knee and having to go through surgery, married backup dancer Kevin Featherline after five months of knowing him, and announced an extremely short-lived career break to start a family. Later, Britney would backtrack from her planned break in a letter posted to her official fan site. I think I should rephrase myself from my previous letters when I was talking about taking a break. What I meant was I'm taking a break from being told what to do. It's cool when you look at someone and don't know whether they are at work or play since it's all the same to them. The things I've been doing for work lately have been so much fun because it's not like work to me anymore. After a year of huge career highs and personal lows, Britney was headed to KISS to take control of the situation and prove her own independence, despite what her management team may have wanted. The song that Britney played on that day was Mona Lisa, a strangely introspective and prophetic song which would go on to launch a thousand fan theories using Da Vinci's famous artwork as its subject. The song discusses a character on the verge of a nervous breakdown. Now see everyone's watching as she starts to fall. They want her to break down, be a legend of her fall. Britney sings. Her voice unusually shaky, sharp, and unproduced, before launching into an unexpected high note during the bridge. Britney's choice to compare herself to Mona Lisa is an interesting one, and one that she would maintain when she directed her next music video for Do Something, under the pseudonym Mona Lisa a few months later. I kinda think she's like my alter ego. Whenever I feel like being mean or possibly like busting people around to get stuff right, she told TRL at that time, it's kinda easier to be called Mona Lisa instead of Britney. But as much as Britney stated that Mona Lisa was an alter ego, in many ways it seems as though that was the real her. Da Vinci's artwork is one of the most well-known images in the world. Yet with this enigmatic smile and mysterious backstory, it's also one of the most hotly debated. Moreover, it's one of the most commonly reproduced artworks in history, with innumerable copies being made for placement on office walls, handbags, and phone cases. Britney related to Mona Lisa as a public figure who was ready to tear down her reproductions and let people finally see the real her. This interest in originals and copies was one Britney clearly intended to explore more, as she let slip in a short interview following the Mona Lisa premiere. The album is probably going to be called Original Doll, Britney told Lozano on air. It's halfway done right now. Good luck with your album. It's untitled. It's, un it's probably going to be called The Original Doll, so... And it's half done? Yeah, it's halfway done. The title of the album was a slide dig towards Britney's management, who at the time was in process of seeking Britney Spears types for an up-and-coming girl group. The Pussycat Dolls. Later, it would be used by fans in dark corners of the internet as evidence that the original Britney had been replaced with an emotionless clone around this time to fulfill the rest of her career duties. But despite the excitement Britney expressed during her impromptu announcement of the album, her record label was adamant that there was no concrete plans to release anything officially. At the time, no one involved in the recording of the song had even been paid yet. No album is scheduled at the moment, but Britney is in the studio working on some material. Jive Records said in a statement to Billboard, There are no plans to service Mona Lisa to the radio. Ultimately, Mona Lisa was the only song that was ever officially confirmed for Original Doll. And when that album didn't come to fruition, it was reworked for the Chaotic EP, the soundtrack to Britney and Featherline's short-lived reality show. Also on the EP was Chaotic, which was recorded with Bloodshy and Avent, producers of Mona Lisa, Henrik Jonbeck and Michelle Bell and Someday I Will Understand, which Britney wrote herself. Of all the songs that have been speculated to appear on Original Doll, these two are the most likely choices. Henrik Jonbeck confirmed that he had ridden with Britney on her German Onyx hotel tour bus in 2004, which was around the same time that Mona Lisa was recorded, and Someday was written in early 2005, before Britney learned of her first pregnancy. Just a month or two after the Original Doll announcement, 
The EP's bonus track, Over To You Now, is another possible inclusion on the album, although many fans speculate that the song was instead an In The Zone outtake due to its sound. It's also possible that the new recordings on Greatest Hits, My Prerogative, had at one point been considered for Original Doll. My Prerogative and Do Something were both recorded on different legs of the Onyx Hotel tour, around the same time as Mona Lisa, and featured a similar percussion R&B style. I've Just Begun Having My Fun, which was also on the album, had already been released nine months earlier, alongside Don't Hang Up. The answer in Girls and Boys has bonus tracks on Britney's DVD for In The Zone, but these were all recorded pre-Onyx Hotel and are generally considered to be from a different era. On top of this, there are several songs which have leaked in recent years which fans attribute to Original Doll. Even though in reality, they were recorded prior to In The Zone. By 2007, it seems as though Britney had officially given up the fight for Original Doll. By this point in time, she had turned her attention to recording Blackout, which had a very different sound. Blackout cuts like Gimme More used Spears' voice as just another processed instrument to layer atop heavy EDM beats. Despite being a revolutionary album, Blackout lacked the emotional connection that Spears had teased two years prior with Mona Lisa. Of course, Blackout wasn't the only thing to happen to Spears in 2007. Britney's mental breakdown is at this point stuff of a legend, with images of her shaving her head, wielding an umbrella as she smashes car windshields, and crying in a British accent all taking a permanent place in pop culture. Looking back at Original Doll retroactively, we can't help but wonder would Spears' breakdown have happened if she'd been able to release the album of her dreams? Celebrities nowadays have unprecedented allowance to express themselves however they want, with social media like Twitter and Instagram allowing them to speak directly to fans without interference from management. But Britney didn't have that luxury. The only way she could tell the world how she was feeling was through her music, and this she was up for the risk through last-minute KISS FM interviews. With both of those avenues taken away from her, it seems like it was almost inevitable for Britney to crack under pressure the way she did. With the Britney Spears of 2018 more overprotected and inaccessible than ever, it seems likely that fans yearning for more information on the original doll will only intensify. But it's not just the music that has them hungry for more. It's the promise of a Spears who is breaking out of her shell to be exactly who she wanted to be for the first time in her life. Thank you.